Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. And no, I do not know why this cow is doing this, but I'm quite positive she did not burn the roof of her mouth with a hot slice of pizza. Now on to today's video. We have got a girl with a sore right front foot, so let's get started. So over the past couple weeks, for whatever reason, I've been getting a ton of questions to talk about how I became a hoof trimmer and the path that I took to get there. So today's video, I'm going to cover that. So it all started about 1998. I was going to college and I started working on a dairy to help pay my way through college. And one of the jobs that I had when I was there was to help their hoof trimmer um, when he came to the farm. So part of my job was to help them sort cows, help them get them into the chute, uh, pick up feet and things like that to help him to move him along and make the process go a little smoother So I did that for a couple of years while whenever he would come I would help him and I started to take interest in it I'd always wanted to have my own business and I thought hey, this could be a perfect fit so About the end of my junior year I asked him if he would when I graduated would train me to be a hoof trimmer and he agreed so as soon as I graduated in May of 2002 I began training. I think it was the very next day. I took off and we went. He was in Plainview, Minnesota, and I started working with him basically six days a week for about three months, and we trimmed a ton of feet. I got to see a lot of different farms, a lot of different setups, learned how to set up, learned how to deal with customers, learned the best practices, how to deal with cows, um, all of those things to help run a successful business. I got to see how a successful business was being run. So, and I knew almost more importantly, the things not to do to, to try to make sure your customers were happy. And that was basically how it all started. After that three months of, of training, I uh, started my um, own business up in the northern part of Wisconsin, where I grew up. I had some contacts there, so I started uh, building my route, and it took about a year and a half, and I had a full route built. And that's when my wife, my wife now, she was my fiance at the time, she was offered a job in the southern part of the state. So I kind of went for a drive to look around and thought, well, I could make this work. Let's see what happens. So I started actually advertising and started building customer base in the southern part of the state. So about end of 2006, I believe, I got too busy and I had to sell my northern route. And from then on, I was full time in the southern part down where I live now near La Crosse. And that's where I've been ever since. But basically, the education I had wasn't necessarily formal schooling. It was more like an apprenticeship. I trained or trimmed every day, trained with a professional that was able to give me lots of experience with feet and lots of different situations. And really, I think prepared me um, as well as I possibly could have uh, without being thrown into the fire. You know, that's where you really learn most of the stuff is after the fact. I've learned a ton in the last almost nearly 20 years now, but that's where I got my start. But enough about me, let's start talking about this foot. What we had here was a white line defect that ultimately resulted in an abscess. We had some sole separation, and now we've got a lesion on the sole of the foot, probably left over from when that was separated. Another question I get asked a lot along these lines is, what's the difference between a white line defect, a white line lesion, and an abscess, or an ulcer, and things like that? Well, a white line defect is simply a, a problem in the white line, a defective white line. Basically, it can be a crack in the white line or some hemorrhaging in the white line. And all it does, all it means is really that that white line did not form correctly. So bacteria is able to penetrate that white line and eventually make its way to the corium. When it gets to the corium, that corium becomes infected and the result is going to be an abscess. You're going to get some, a pocket of, of pus to form or um, different, you know, uh, irritations to form along that, along the corium, and that's going to result in a lesion. That's what we're looking at here. That is a lesion caused by that original white line defect. Now, up above where I was just blotting with the with that rag there, that is where the original defect was. You can kind of see that's healed in. And likely down below here, the lesion that's left was part of a larger area 
Uh, that most of it is healed, but this area has probably got some infection with uh, dermatitis, so it's not able to heal correctly. So we're gonna fix that with some salicylic acid here in a bit. And get this other claw uh, prepped for a block here, and then we will treat the, the remaining lesion that's there. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you've probably wondered why when I'm trimming on some feet do I make that sole completely white, and on others, it'll be not white. It'll be, there'll be some dirty spots like you see here on this one. And it all has to do with the thickness of the sole, right? If we have a thick sole, I can remove more and you're likely going to have an area that they're a sole that's completely white. In this case, because that separation didn't happen very long ago, this lesion's not very old, that layer of new sole there is very thin. It's probably only uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I probably shouldn't say that. I probably should go metric, but I'm not gonna. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick there, so it's not very thick. I can't, I don't want to remove that because that's the area of protection. That's what's protecting that corium. It's just too thin. Now, if that area, that sole was much thicker, then of course I could remove it and I would want to get it to a uniform sole thickness all the way through that. Because we've got some lesions here and, and because this sole is thin, I can't do that. And there, it's really not advantageous to make it white. It just looks pretty. Based on the severity of this lesion, it's really not gonna take long to get it to heal up. Salicylic acid wrap will take care of that dermatitis. That block's gonna give that sole time to get a little bit thicker. And within a couple weeks, this cow will be back to normal. The cure time for the glue I use is three minutes. So in the winter time, it might take a little bit longer. In the summer, it'll cure a little bit faster, but generally three minutes and that block is, is fully cured and ready to go down and support weight. This glue is cured, this foot's ready to go down, so let's let her go. I'm gonna leave you guys today with more of that cow rolling her tongue, and I wanna know, truthfully, how many watch that and try to do the same thing with their tongue when they're watching it. I did. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We will see you all on the next one.